I had a mother and father that taught me hard work ethic. They taught me if I was gonna be great at something, it's not just given to you, you have to work for it. Music is something that you can take people on a journey from happiness to sadness to longing for love. There's all different kinds of songs and stories you can tell through music and I've always enjoyed that and I've always enjoyed watching other artists that were true to themselves tell their stories in those ways. Growing up at Vera Beach is a uh, pretty amazing experience if you're a kid. You have the Indian River, which you cross to get to the barrier islands. We could go out surfing or diving or snorkeling and fishing in the ocean, or you could come over and go fishing in the river in the intercoastal. Or then you had west of town, which you could go out hunting, and it was a great place to grow up, and it's just amazing. Vero is such a small, close-knit sort of town. Everybody's very supportive there of, of, of everyone. I think as a community, and I look at a lot of my friends that have done very well in their life, I think it's really stemmed from the kind of values that all families in our hometown really helped instill in their kids. I'm really fortunate to grow up with a mom and dad that were always there for me. My dad was very strict growing up. It was always yes sir, yes ma'am. And he taught us, you know, values and morals that any great father or mother would really instill in their children. A lot of the reasons that I'm doing the things I'm doing in my life is because of the foundation that my parents built for me. And it's also the things that I carry on and teach to my daughter. I feel so blessed. I constantly, you know, say my prayers and I'm thankful for my mom and dad because uh, I've really leaned on them a lot through the years. We have a very strong knit family. Having a twin brother is uh, something really special, you know, I, it's all I've ever known, but I feel very fortunate and lucky to have a twin brother because I always had somebody to, to play basketball with in the front driveway. I always had somebody to fight with every day. We shared a room until we were about 15 years old and playing baseball and backyard tackle football, breaking bones, and played a lot of tennis and golf. But he's my best friend, and, and to have a best friend and somebody to sleep over every night uh, is pretty cool. My dad was always a very great golfer and probably should have played professionally. As far as I can remember, I've just always been around the game of golf. My grandfather loves golf. But I think uh, growing up and being around golf is really also something else that helped instill morale in my family and values. I think when you combine my mother and father's teachings as, as a kid for myself with the game of golf, it's really brought me a long way in life. When I went off to college, I had an accident wakeboarding, water skiing, and ended up kind of setting me back, so I wasn't able to actually walk on the golf team at Florida State. My brother had a full tennis scholarship there, and that's the whole reason we went to the same school. We were living together. I realized during that time of when I got hurt that I don't think golf was something either that I really loved as much as my dad loved it and as much as he wanted me to fulfill the dreams he never fulfilled. And I just, I quit. It wasn't until that injury in college and not being able to play a college sport that I had to find something to do. And he said that, he said, well, I'm not gonna let you sit around and do nothing, so you better go get a job. Didn't even know what I was gonna do. So I decided it was time for me to just find happiness elsewhere. I called my parents and said, I'm coming home. Leaving our hometown and going off to the great Florida State University, living with my brother and having our own place, and all of a sudden now going back home to live with mom and dad, it was kind of a big awakening for me. It's kind of in this weird rut, not knowing what I wanted to do, but I think that's part of life. And sometimes you have to embrace what life throws at you. So I saw this guy playing at the bar and beer in front of him and a pitcher. He had pretty girls paying attention to what he was doing. And I thought, well, 
that looks like something I'd like to do. I've always loved music. I'd love to be that guy. So I had a really good friend of mine who had a guitar and I asked him if I could just borrow it. So I started teaching myself to play. I would go play this little coffee shop in town and play everything from Dave Matthews to Garth Brooks. So I finally actually felt like, you know what, I'm getting pretty good at this. At that moment is when I went into the bar where I'd seen that guy playing before. And I asked the bar owner, I said, hey, I can do that. And I wanted to know if you need a guy every now and then other than him. He actually told me, he's like, yeah, you want to come play tonight? And I thought, OK, yeah, sure, I'll be here tonight. Once I had the opportunity to do that, it was up to me to get up there and, and own it. What he didn't know is I didn't have a guitar that plugged in. I didn't even have my own guitar. So that day, I, I had a credit card that I'd started. I went to the local uh, music store and told the guy there, hey, I have a gig tonight. I need a guitar that plugs in. So he sold me a pretty nice guitar. And I went back over there that night, plugged that sucker in, and started playing. I think sometimes the things that I've been the best at in life are the things where you just throw me in the fire, and I got to find a way to get out. So I made the move back to Tallahassee, re-enrolled, and I had a really good friend of mine who told me he was a drummer. So I said, well, let's start a band. Let's find a couple other guys. And one of the guys said he played guitar. He was a bouncer at the bar. And then another buddy of ours was a, was a bassist. There we were, four piece. Now we just needed a name. So uh, we chose the wonderful name of Yeehaw Junction. Yeehaw Junction is this little town. The only way you can get to it is taking Highway 60 from Vero Beach directly west, and that's the way to get to Tallahassee. So for the next couple years, uh, Yeehaw Junction toured state capital of Florida, Tallahassee. I wrote a song called It's Been a While that uh, was my first release with Yeehaw Junction. It really helped feed our fan base, helped us afford to uh, really make up some awesome t-shirts with this donkey on the back of it that said the best time you've ever had with a jackass. Because that's really what we were. We were just jackass kids playing music and thinking we were good. It was a great time, and we really made a lot of strides with that band. And one night, I uh, just had this feeling. And I called my parents. I told them, I said, look, I feel that it's time for me to just pack up and move to Nashville. I just, I feel this calling that I need to be there. And my dad said, you know, I believe you, and you're my son. And if that's what you want to do, by all means, you're a grown man now. You make that decision, go for it. The next day, I got a U-Haul trailer. I drove nine hours up to Nashville from Tallahassee. My mom actually rode with me, which is really something I'll always remember, because I'll never forget seeing Nashville, Tennessee, and I just, I'll never forget the feeling like, whoa, I'm here. I was thinking, OK, well, I need to start a bank account. Maybe if I go to the bank on Music Row, they deal with other musicians and labels, then maybe they can help me, because they know people. I went there, and this lady named Becky McElwain took the little bit amount of money that I had and started a bank account for me, and then asked, you know, what are you doing here? And I told her, so I'd love to hear your music sometime. So I gave her a copy of my music, and the next day, she called me and said, I hope you don't mind. I gave that CD to a guy at Warner Brothers, and he's probably going to be calling you because he was really impressed. I called my parents and told them, I've only been here for a week. I've made it, you know? I'm going to hit the big time. That wasn't necessarily the case, but um, I did get the ball rolling at that moment. Moving to Nashville, I'm not really knowing the culture there. I think there's a thing within country music, there's always been of what's country and what isn't country. And growing up in a beach town, having long hair at the time, a lot of people were like, he's from Vero Beach, Florida, but I could care less what they thought. At the time, I mean, I was just writing what I knew about. You have to really open up your heart and your arms. And it's not just about the music. Country music's about the environment and the feeling. I think loyalty is something that comes along with country music that you don't tend to find as much in other genres. It's a lot like NASCAR racing, where once somebody buys into a driver, that's their driver. If you like anybody else, you know, forget you. I like this guy. And country music fans are like that. 
that's what I've always loved about it. Because if you can be a good person and, and somebody that uh, can show the fans in country music that you care about them and appreciate them, they will always be there for you as well. I think what it all boils down to for me is being kind to people and, and understanding what they're going through because someone's always going through something. And if we could all focus on helping others and being kind, that's what makes the world go around. So we started the Jake Owen Foundation to help individuals that were just struggling. This is what we do. We help people, no matter where you are. I get these letters written to us from these kids that uh, we've been able to give grants to for college that would have never been able to go off to college. And some of these kids are doctors now. And they went off, got their doctorate degree in there, and now they're helping people, right? They're saving lives. And that's what's really beautiful about it. We've not only helped a lot of people, but we've helped them realize that they can also help people. I think the world needs more of that. I look back upon all those decisions that I made to become a musician. It has brought me so many amazing things in life, but being a celebrity or being famous isn't anything that I ever longed for. But when you do become that person, you have a lot, it's a huge responsibility to not only yourself, but it's a huge responsibility to all those that look up to you. As a human being, I'm constantly chipping away at myself. I saw a bumper sticker one time that said, stop beating yourself up so bad because God's still working on you. He's just painting, you know, and there's times where you gotta like wipe some stuff off and repaint it. For a lot of years, I was just this energizer bunny just going, going, going and never stopping. I love what I do. I'm not doing it because I feel like I have to. I never really had reason to go home. And once I had my daughter, that was the most concrete example of something I created it's something I'm now responsible to teach right from wrong the way my father did for me. And it's hard to do all that on the road all the time. So for me, being home is surrounding myself with obviously my daughter, but my family and my friends, because those are the people that make you feel whole. They make you want to be a better person. And in this crazy life that I live that can kind of pick you apart sometimes, Home for me is going back to the place where people accept you for who you are, and home is just where my heart is. Mm -hmm.